help my friend Mary, Lord? Mary's in trouble. Please help her, Lord. She's a really nice person. Help her, Lord. I wouldn't have anything without her. Please help her. Mary's been such a good wife to me. Won't you help her? Dear Lord, my daughter Mary. Please, God, help my mommy. Help my sister Mary. Bless mommy and daddy, and especially... God. Who has been assigned to look into these prayers, Teresa? Well, we're still looking, Joseph. Christmas Eve is a very busy night, and this Christmas especially... There's an entire town praying for one woman, Teresa. Those prayers must be attended. Now, who is available to attend them? Clara. Who else? Just Clara. This is a delicate task, Teresa, and in the 200 years Clara has been here, she has never been trusted with even the simplest assignment. Well, then all the more reason. Not only that, she still hasn't earned her wings. Well, that's difficult to do if you've never... I don't intend to discuss this, Teresa. Yes, Joseph. Now, who is available to help Mary Bailey on this most crucial night of her life? No one. Then send for Clara. The Angel Clara. Please don't. Don't blow the trumpet for every announcement. I'm thrilled and honored. Not now, Clara. Uh. In order to help this woman for whom everyone in Bedford Falls is praying, you must know something about her. Do you understand? Oh, yes, and I just want and to... Then come. We have a long journey. She's so full of spirit, she probably won't ask for herself. I ask you to, to, to guide her, to give her a sign. Now pay attention, Clara. I'm going to tell you the story of Mary. I just want to take this opportunity to tell you how pleased and excited I am to earn me wings by saving someone so many people are praying for. <laughs> you're not to save Mary, you're to guide her. I meant God, I just said save. Now this is Bedford Falls. Charming. A little dark, but charming. able to do that after I save Mary and get my wings. Clara, you're not to save her. God, I really do mean God when I say save. Because you cannot interfere with events by saving someone. Of course not. That's why you have to guide them. So watch carefully because these are the events in Mary's life you must know in order to guide her and earn me wings. That's Mary, Clara. Little Mary Bailey. Oh, she looks so young to be in so much trouble. She's only 11 here, Clara. Oh, well, then. That's probably why she looks so young. See you next time, Mary. Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. You can do it. Oh, no, I got it, Sam. Ow. Bad, Sam. All right, come on, Harry, you're next. All right, give him a big push. All right, come, come on, on Harry. baby brother. You can do it. You can beat the mark. It was very impressive the way she saved her little brother, Harry. And I just want to say how charming I think it all is. The people, the town, the little girl. She'll be very easy to save. Guide. And it's not all that charming, Clara. Get out of the way! Get out of the way! Clara, 
snipe. That, for example, is Henry F. Potter, the richest and, of course, the meanest man in town. There's always one who's worse than the others. Yes, and there's always one who's better, like Mary's father, Peter Bailey. Don't go in there. Uncle Willie, I gotta see my dad. Potter, I'm just asking for a little time. And my business, time is a handout. You don't have two nickels to rub together and call a dime, Bailey. Stop running a benevolent society for deadbeats. Deadbeats, hell, without their work and industry, you'd be flat broke. Or clothes. I can't. Those people have children. They're not my children, Bailey. <laughs> Can't afford children, they shouldn't have them in the first place. Hey, Four clothes, a couple of them, that'll raise the 5,000 you owe the bank, teach people these deadbeats a lesson. What makes you so miserable, Potter? You have no family and there's no children. You can't even begin to spend the money you do have. Well, I suppose I should give it away. The failure is like you and that idiot brother of yours. My pop's not a failure. No, not now, Mary. You're better than him. All he's got is money. My pop's not afraid of you. He's hey, everybody knows pickle it. Pickle Bailey, <laughs> all sentiment. She's spirited, but I consider that a challenge. Clara, that's George Hatch, the boy Mary Bailey has a crush on. Oh, does he like her too? Yes, of course. Oh. That's why he doesn't look at her, and she doesn't look at him. Do they spend a lot of time not looking at each other? No. After school, Mary runs errands for her father at the Bailey Building and Loan, and George Hatch works for the druggist, Mr. Gower. Oh, yes, there's something you should know about Mary and Mr. Gower. Um, what do you want? I want but first to talk with Phosphate. What's the matter with him? His son, the one in college, was killed last night in an accident. Hi, Mary. Hi, Vi. Hiya, Georgie. Uh, what'll it be, Vi? Well, I don't know, George. A fed Sunday, maybe? Or no, strawberry. I'll get the licorice. You better worry about Vi Sunday. Please, go away. I, I don't have time for you now. <laughs> Mr. Gower. Mr. Gower. George! Uh, George, stop your lollygagging and get this over to Jimmy Bishop's right away. He's got influenza. Mr. Gower. Mary, will you please leave? Medicine's poison. Huh? Poison? Well, it is. I am going to give you the Please, Mr. Gower, don't deserve. hurt me. George, you told me about your son. I know you didn't mean to. It wasn't your fault. I won't tell anybody ever. Oh, Mary, Mary, I'm sorry. Did she ever tell anyone? Not a soul. Ah, Mary's gonna marry Potter. Ah, she's gonna Nothing marry very unusual happened to Mary Bailey while she was growing up. She dreamt of going to college. Went to college? Dreamt. But the family could only afford to send Harry. Harry, college. And Mary went on dreaming her dreams. I want to write. And planning her plans. I'm going to save all the money I earn working for my father. And I'm going to travel. And I'm going to go everywhere and see everything. Well, little Mary Bailey's grown into quite a young lady, hasn't she, Joseph? She's off to see the world, Clara. Tomorrow she's leaving for Paris. <laughs> oh, Uncle Willie. <laughs> I'm going to miss you so much. It's a farewell present, Mary. Go on, open it. Oh, Mr. Gower. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gower. <laughs> Oh, and it's the perfect size. Uh, it's called The Traveler. I'll put stickers on it from everywhere I go. I'll put France here, Italy, Germany, Belgium. India. Maybe you'd meet Kipling. Uh, China. Nobody's ever been to China. Oh, well, then that settles it. China goes right here. <laughs> oh, Mary, it's a, it's a big, exciting world out there. Now go get it. I will. I will. Dear Lord, we thank you for your bounty. And please watch over Mary on her voyage. <laughs> <laughs>
thank you for allowing Harry to survive long enough to graduate from high school. That reminds me. Amen. I'm supposed Amen. to pick up. Amen. I'm supposed to pick up the prize for the Charleston oh, contest. I would sit down. Have down. Have Mom, I was elected to, to do that. You know, they said I could do it. They told me I could. Oh, oh, look, Mom, I'm oh, ruined. You aren't ruined. <gasps> oh, you'll survive. My goodness. Come on into the kitchen. I'll fix you up. Oh, yeah. He is so funny. Was I like that when I graduated? Save me oh, you, you were a bit rambunctious. You're different, though. You do have a great business sense, Mary. I don't know if that'll help you as a writer, but it's exactly what we need. Well, you'll have Harry to help, Pop. Well, Harry, Harry's got a lot of growing up to do. Well, he's the same wage I was when I started. Well, maybe you were born older. Pop, I can't stay here. I know that, honey. And I'm for you. You always said we should follow our dreams. I know that you've tried to make the building and loan something that would pay. Well, not, not pay, Mary. To make it work. That's an idea. To put their trust in the people next door. Maybe even hold up their heads against the potters of the world. Huh? It is a dream. It's a beautiful one. It just isn't mine. I just thought you might give the old building and loan some consideration after you've had your fling. It isn't a fling, Pop. It's my life. I have something I want to do. I And going to Europe is just a part of it. I, I just go crazy if I had to spend the rest of my life cooped up in some shabby little office. Oh, Pop, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. Th this will always be home to me. You know that. Yes, I do know that. And you're right. It is shabby. But it'll be a lot shabbier without you. Oh, Pop. You're probably the best person I'll ever meet anywhere. Then why bother to leave? You know, you could hear better, Cousin Tilly, if you just stayed in the room with us. I only understand oh, recipes. Oh, my goodness, Tilly. Why don't you leave them alone? Go call Harry and Willie. I've got their favorite pie. Willie! You've got it, Harry. There it is. I found it. Oh, thanks, Uncle Willie. I think I have to go away before I can really understand my family. Probably so, <laughs> and vice versa. Oh. And Mary, Mary, why don't you come with me? All your friends are going to be there. We can have a farewell party, OK? Yes, OK. I think that's a terrific idea. I'll go yes. upstairs and change to something perfect. Mary Bailey. Sam! Sam Wainwright. Are you back to buy the town? I don't know. If you come with it. Are you a millionaire yet? Oh, gee, Mary. Give a guy a chance. I just graduated college. How are you, Sam? You're looking at a college grad. I know, Sam. You just told me. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm really happy for you. You look wonderful. So do you. I'm off to Dad's New York office as a trainee. 75 bucks a week. It's great. I wish I could get you to come. Uh, uh, oh, uh, no. I... Mary? Yes, sure. What, Sam? Would you like to dance or anything? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'd love to dance more than anything. Hey, that's swell. Uh, you know, I just, I learned this new dance at school. Uh -huh. I want to teach it to you. It's the, it's the Charleston. I think this is a waltz. Oh, that's wonderful. Now I'm going to work for my father in New York at 75 bucks a week. Oh, that's even more wonderful. You know, I've never even been to New York. Say, do you Charleston? Let's Charleston. Yeah, but, but, but this is a waltz. <laughs> Would you like to dance? I never dance with strangers. Oh, but I'm not a stranger. I'm your old friend George Hatch. No, you can't be. The George Hatch I'm looking for is about 18 and very restless. And I came here hoping to find an old friend. Maybe you've seen her, Mary Bailey? I never heard of her. Oh, well, she's, um, about 16 and kind of scrawny. 
Where was your imagination? I guess it couldn't have been very good, could it? Shall we? You never did have a very good time, did you? Now, here's our class on the breaker, Harry Bailey! Hear ye, hear ye, the Charleston Contest! Yay! I've honored events in Bedford Falls since last year. <laughs> The last couple on the floor wins this cup. Yeah. Yeah. Charles, can't you control your own family? Sam would be beside himself. be in Oklahoma by now, building all those towns you used to talk about. Well, I had to get some experience first. You know, learn what to do, how to do it. I'm on my way to Oklahoma now, though. Maybe even West Texas. You know something, Mary? I want to start with nothing and make something out of it. A frontier, space. I want to build there. Something out of my own head. Something I could reach out and touch. Oh, George, I know exactly what you mean. Creating something out of your own head, something that nobody else has ever thought about before. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. You know, maybe we could, uh... What? Oh, too bad. You know that saying. Break a window and the house fairy will make your wish come true. Oh, come on. Really? I'll bet you don't even know whose house this is. Well, I'll tell you the truth, I never really thought about it. See, I guess you miss a lot if you're just interested in oil derricks. Oh, no, Mary. Not oil derricks. Towns. Well, towns aren't just buildings, you know. I mean, they're people and their feelings, like the Spanish ambassador's house. This house was the Spanish ambassador's? Oh, George, that's the biggest scandal ever to hit Bedford Falls. Mr. Potter and the ambassador's wife. <laughs> Old man Potter? Yeah, they had one torrid, impetuous summer, and then it was over. The ambassador found out about it, packed up, left, never came back. When I go to Spain, I'm going to look him up. I'm going to get him to sell the house to me. You know, for the good of the town. Mary. Huh? You're lying. <laughs> George, I don't lie. I create. And you had me going there for a minute. I know I did. <laughs> come on, let's make a wish. Oh! oh! What did you wish for? That you'd spend every night with me for the next two weeks until I leave. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a conflict of wishes. I'm leaving for Europe tomorrow. Let's make another wish. Come on, get her off. Okay. Come quick. It's Dad. He's had a stroke.
Mary, I, I know you've got a train to catch, so I won't make any speeches. Mm -hmm. But if your father could have seen the way you took over these past three months, he'd have been a very proud man. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> you know, three months ago, Mary, I thought we were going to have to close. You have done a wonderful job. <laughs> Harris is gain his bed. So we thank you. And we all wish you Godspeed on your trip. Thank you. So much for amenities. Let's get back to business. Which is to appoint a successor to our dear friend Peter Bailey. That's not what I'm here for. This institution isn't necessary to Bedford Falls. Never was. I move we turn the company over to the state receiver. Oh, Mr. Potter, in a little uh, premature. Judge, I don't want any more of your political claptrap. Peter Bailey's gone. There's no one here competent to run the damn thing. Well, I feel as though I... Like I said, no one competent. Now, well, wait just a minute here. Now, look here, Mary. Your father was no businessman, and business is what we're here to discuss. No matter how sad I am, it is passing. Oh, that's wonderful coming from you, Potter. Considering you probably sent him to his grave. Ridiculous. You're what's ridiculous, Mr. Potter. You never could beat my father, could you? And You're a preposterous girl, Mary. You'd better hurry off to Europe and write one of those books you deal better in fiction than in real life. Yes, you sir. think I couldn't have crushed this nickel and dime operation in a day if I'd wanted to? Well, maybe this is a nickel and dime operation. And frankly, why anybody would want to spend their life doing it is beyond me. But Peter Bailey dedicated his life to it, and you people should understand what you're giving up before you knuckle under to it. Now, Mary, let's not get uh, all excited. Shut up. You should get excited. I'm leaving. You're the ones that have to stay here. You should understand that a, a man like Ernie Baker being able to buy his own taxi cab and own his own house. A taxi driver. Yeah, a taxi driver. My father knew what gave people self-respect. When Potter here gouges them for his company shacks, he steals from them a lot more than just their money. He steals their dignity. And you may not think that shows up on some financial sheet for a hardware store or matters to a doctor or a judge. But just watch what happens to all of you if you let him win. Gentlemen, I still... Mary, what happened? It was awful loud. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? I'll tell you what happened. Mary told Potter off and clubs... Spades, Uncle Willie. Okay, spades. Well, what about you? What are you going to do if the building alone closes? I don't know. Easy come, easy come. I'll find something. I, I'm only 49. 55. Mary, don't worry about me. Just get on that train and never look back. <laughs> Do something to keep this place going. I will, I promise, Mary. I will. We have tentatively voted Potter down. Oh. <laughs> I told you, Mary. Come on. Oh, Mary. Oh, Mary. Get on that train and go. I said tentatively. Mary, you you're the only one that knows enough to keep this place going. No, Uncle Willie here's your man, and Harry will help him the way I've always helped my father. It runs in the family. We all know what runs in that family. Harry's very young. And Willie? Well, he's not your father. No, please, look, I... I can't afford to wait till Harry's old enough. Typical Bailey. Long on speeches, short on action. No, sir, young lady. The deal doesn't include anybody else but you. I want you to run it into bankruptcy. And so Mary Bailey stayed in Bedford Falls, and the train left without her. Oh, no. And she turned in her ticket to Paris and gave her brother Harry the money to go to college. And she waited four years. It doesn't seem fair. Harry off to college, George Hatch off building whatever it is he builds, and Mary still working at the Bailey Loan and Building. Building and loan. And that's not the attitude we're looking for here, Clara. I oh, know, but four years pass so slowly for a girl that age. Yes, but they pass. And the day finally came for Harry to come home and Mary to leave. Look, that's George Edge. 
with a girl. Why oh, didn't he tell Mary he was coming back? Doesn't he like her anymore? Yes, that's why he didn't tell her he was coming back. Well, sorry, George, it's too late. It's Mary's turn to leave. Mary! Mary! Oh, there he is! You look so great. There's another thing. Um, I, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Bailey. Hello, how do you do? Oh, nice Hi. to meet you, Miss. No, M Mrs. Bailey. Uh, uh, another Mrs. Bailey. Th this is my wife, Helen. Harry! Oh, congratulations! Oh, 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 hey, stop that! <laughs> To tell you the truth, I was kind of nervous about it, you know. Don't be silly. She's lovely, and Bedford Falls could use some new blood. Well, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't really Helen that I was nervous about, you know. Uh, that's not really the problem. It's, uh, it's, it's her father. He's not too lovely? He's, uh, he's a manufacturer up in Rochester, and, uh, he's doing very well, you know. Uh -huh. And, uh... Well, it is the depression, you know, and... He's offered me a job. Harry, congratulations. Where's Rochester, Harry? George, George, George. Harry! George, how are you? It's great to see you. I, I, I'd like you to meet... This is Helen, my wife. We're You're married. So... <laughs> We're married. This is George. That's wonderful. Hey, Mary, look who's here. George, George Hatch. Hey, Harry. <laughs> Hiya, Mary. Well, George Hatch. Who'd you expect? Well, I certainly didn't expect to see you. Well, who else was going to come in from the frontier for you? I don't know. I imagine somebody who'd uh, written to me once in four years. You know I wasn't good at that. You're the writer. Besides, I expected that you'd be in Paris, France by now. I thought you'd be in uh, Tulsa or the Yukon or whatever. Well, I was, but uh, I had a little temporary setback, something called the Depression. They're closing the oil field. <laughs> yes, I know. Some news does reach Bedford Falls. Hey, you look great. So do you. You should have known I'd come back. How? I wasn't going to break up the most famous dance team in Bedford Falls. As I recall, it was all that. Come on, take a walk with me. No. You know, they roll up the sidewalks and put them away. Come on. $2,000. I saved $2,000. That's a lot of money, Mary. $2,000. You know what that means? That's my ticket to anywhere I want to go. I'm in great shape. See that? Can't miss. Oh, come on, George. Listen, it's your house, Mary. Why don't you give it a try? I don't know. It seems childish. Listen, four years ago, you said we had a conflict of wishes. Maybe we just didn't wish for the right thing. Come on, Mary. What's the matter? Can't you dream anymore? Not tonight, I guess. It's not the Mary Bailey I know. Come on. Try. Come on.
Who's which? I don't know. Maybe the house fairy is being economical. These are hard times, you know. Maybe we made the same wish. I don't have $2,000, but I can buy you a cup of coffee. Then you, uh, you never left. For Paris, I mean. Well, I, I almost did. I was going until today. I stayed because Harry was gonna go away to school and then he was gonna come back and take over. He came back. He's got a wife, he's got a new job. His father-in-law's got this factory and... Oh, what's the difference? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Well, Mary, maybe it does. I mean, maybe he's doing something he really wants to do. Well, I'm, I'm sure he is. It just isn't gonna help me get to Paris or wherever. It's not gonna stop you either. How do you know what stops anybody? What do you know about stopping? You, you just go and do whatever you please, whatever you want. You don't have any responsibility to anybody. You and your $2,000, you can't miss, right? That's right. I can't miss. Now, I'll tell you something else. You can't either. All you've got to do is really believe what you want to do and do it. How do you know what I can do and what I can't do? You think you can just come in here, take off your jacket, just make yourself at home? You don't know anything. You haven't been here for four years. You think you can just come in and, and tell me what's the matter with my life? You, you, and what are you looking at? I love you. Get out of here, George. Well, why, that doesn't even have anything to do with anything. How can you even say that to me? Hello? Harry, this is Sam. Sam Wainwright, remember me? <laughs> Man of your dreams? Yes, Sam. Hi, how are you? Oh, well, I'm fine, Mary. I'm just fine. When I say I'm the man of your dreams, well, I'm more than just that, you know. Uh, yes, Sam, I, I know. <laughs> well, maybe this time you don't, Mary. I know you're never surprised by much, but maybe this time I've got a surprise for you. Oh, that's nice. I could certainly use one. You're still dreaming of going to Europe? Huh? I'm always dreaming. Don't go. Please stay. Hey. Oh. What is it, Uncle William? Bank holiday? 
everybody. Big trouble. The bank called our loan. I had to give away every penny. All of it? Every last cent, and it's still less than we owe. I didn't know what to do, so I closed the doors. You shouldn't close the doors, Uncle Willie. These people are terrified. Hello. Mary, it's Potter. Yes, Mr. Potter. There's a rumor around town that you've closed your doors. I was worried about you. These things can get ugly, you know. I just wanted to tell you that I've uh, notified the National Guard. We haven't closed our doors, Mr. Potter. You know our hours. We don't close our doors until 6 o'clock. Funny, that's not what I heard. Uh, but don't you worry your little head, Mary. I have personally guaranteed the bank's funds. No, I could lose fortune doing it. I'm willing to guarantee all your investors, too. Just tell them to bring all their shares over here, and what I'll do is I'll pay them 30 cents on the dollar. Pretty generous, I'd say, given the mess you're in. Well, thank you, Mr. Potter. That's a very fine, generous offer of help, but uh, we're not in a mess here. I, I can't imagine where you got your information, but uh, the building alone is just fine, Mr. Potter. How could that be, Mary? The bank just called you loan. The building alone is fine, Mr. Potter. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Listen, everybody. Th this thing really isn't as black as it appears. I I've just talked to Mr. Potter, mm -hmm. and he's personally guaranteed cash payments at the bank. Uh, but I've got my money here. Did he guarantee this place, too? No, yeah. Charlie. We don't need Potter over here. Oh, I want my money. I want my money. Wait, wait a minute. You, you're thinking of this place all wrong. This is a building and loan. The, the money isn't in the safe like it is over at the bank. The money's in your houses. It's, it's in your house, Ed. And Charlie, it's in your house. You've invested your money in each other. What are you going to do? Foreclose on one another? I got $242 in here. I want what's mine. Yes, all right, all right, all right, all right, right Tom, fine. You, you, you can have your money in 60 days. Just sign right here. 60 days? I can't wait 60 days. Well, that's what you agreed to when you bought your shares. You all get your money back? No. After 60 days. Well, I got mine. Potter will pay 30 cents on the dollar for every share you've got. Cash. 30 days. What do you say to that? You agreed to 60 days when you bought the shares, Tom. I'll pay you in 60 days. Then I'm sorry, Mary. I'm going to go to Potter. A third is better than nothing. That's right. Yeah. Wait, Tom. Wait, all of you, please. Listen. Potter already owns the mill and the bank. You want him to own you two for 30 cents on the dollar? Joe, you lived in one of Potter's houses. Have you forgotten what he charged you with that broken down shack? Ed, remember last year when you couldn't make your payments? The building alone didn't throw you out. Potter would have thrown you out on the street. You know that. Can't you see what's happening here? Potter isn't selling, he's buying. And he's, it's because we're panicking, and he's not. He's just sitting up there picking off bargains, and we're the bargains. We can beat this thing if we just don't panic, if we just stick together. But we just got to have faith in each other. But my husband hasn't worked in a year. I need money, Mary, not faith. Yeah, yeah we've got to have money. Got you, Bills, Mary. I know. No, I... I... I can't feed my kids on promises, Mary. Hey, listen. This isn't a promise. This is real money. What? Huh? And you can feed your kids on this. Can I get my money now? The building alone is open for business, and you won't have to wait 60 days either. I want my money. George, are you sure? That's all we have. Listen, I'm no banker. You take care of these people. Okay, Tom. How much do you need? 242. No, no, please, Tom. That's what I need, Mary. To close out my account. No, no, no. Your account's still right here. All right. Here, this is just a loan. 42. Okay. All right, Ed. I have $300 in my account. All right, Ed, how much do you need to really get along? Well, I could get by in 20. That's the spirit, Ed. Good. $20. You got that, Uncle Bill? Yes, Billy? I have. Yeah. Okay, great. Mrs. Thompson? Uh, all I need is uh, $17.50, Mary. Oh, Mrs. Thompson, bless your heart. You got 50 cents? Great. Here we go. 10, 5, 17, 50. There we go. Mrs. Johnson? Okay. 
There you go. Great. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Shut down. We made it. We made it. We made it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what have we got? Two dollars in assets. Put it in the vault. All for one and one for one. <laughs> no. Mrs. That's... Hedge, it's your husband. Oh. George. Hi, honey. Oh, George, I'm so glad. I mean, I almost forgot. Ernie will pick you up in five minutes. Why? We, we missed the train, didn't we? Well, maybe the train, but not the boat. What? <clears throat> Why are we stopping here? Watch your step, madame. I get a dram. Yes, it is rather humid, isn't it, madame? Is George here? Yes, the master of the estate is present. Who shall I say is calling? Would you announce the arrival of Mrs. George Hatch? Entrez, madame. Oh. Oh. And Mrs. George Hatch. <clears throat> Welcome home, Mrs. Hatch. <laughs> to Paris and Bedford Falls, and to us. Yes. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I think maybe we shouldn't have broken all those windows. <laughs> <laughs> For the honeymoon. Mm-hmm. I haven't spent your money. No. You didn't spend my money, ours. And you didn't spend it. You invested it. Well, it's poor people. Damn Potter. He scares everybody. He stampedes all over them. Hey, listen. You sound like you're trying to depress a very happy man. That's pretty awful. Mm-hmm. Let's just figure out what our assets are. Okay. Well, I got two dollars in the bank. Wait a minute, not in the bank, in the building and loan. And we've got uh, one dreamer builder of boom towns. And a banker with the imagination of Emil Zola. Oh, George, I love you. And I love you. Even if you didn't get to Paris, France. Yet. Okay. Yet. No sense of dedication. <laughs> and so Mary and George Hatch began building Bailey Park. But Mary and George have no money. Yes, but Mary owns the Bailey building and loan, Clara, and George is a builder. Now, don't you see how that works out? Not really, but I hope it does. I've gotten fond of both of them. Um, Mr. Potter? 
I just don't think you can laugh off that there uh, Bailey Park any longer, sir. Get out of here, Sassini. Let me think about some real problems. I can laugh off any damn thing I please. Yes, we all know that, sir. You don't think I'm worried about a wart like Bailey Parker, do you, Mr. Sassini? No, sir. I'm just giving him enough rope, that's all. And then I'll watch him dangle. Mary. Hiya, Doc. They told me down to the office you were out here. Yeah. Where's George? Oh, he had to go over to Hanford to arrange for some deliveries. It seems everything, supplies, materials, everything's being used by Mr. Potter. How are you feeling, Mary? You're looking a little tired. Do I hear a lecture coming on? No, I was just thinking that maybe uh, you should think less about fighting Mr. Potter. We're not fighting Mr. Potter. He's the one. He makes everything so hard for us. I know. I was just thinking that, well, you and George, you aren't getting any younger, and uh, most people have their families pretty well along by this time. Oh, Doc, tell me. Well, I can't tell you much. Like whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh, really? Oh, wait till George comes home. <laughs> Mrs. Hatch! Mrs. Hatch! Yes? Mr. Potter says he wants to see you. Now. Mr. Potter wants to see me? Well, he says I'm supposed to say... Please. <laughs> Did he? Mr. Potter said please. Please. Well, that's worth a trip in itself. Is that little Mary Bailey? Come in, Mary. Good evening, Mr. Potter. Uh, have a drink, Mary? A glass of wine, maybe? <laughs> no, no, thank you. I can't offer you a cigar. <laughs> George would relish one. I know. Where is he, Mary? Hasn't run off to some oil field, has he? You know very well where he is, Mr. Potter. He's trying to get supplies you blocked off. Yeah, take this box for him. With my compliments. Thank you. Well, I suppose I'll find out sooner or later. What exactly did you want to see me about? That's what I like about you, Mary, right down to business. Yeah. Make yourself comfortable. Mary, I'm an old man. Most people hate me. Let them. I run practically everything in this town. With one exception, the building and loan. As you know, for several years now, I've been trying to get control of it. Or kill it. Yeah. But you've been stopping me, Marianne. Now you've done it. You beat me. That, that takes some doing. Now, four years ago, for instance, you remember the depression run on the bank, panic in the streets, the whole country on the edge of chaos? We kept our heads, Mary, you and me. You saved the building and loan, and uh, I saved the rest. Some people might interpret that differently. The envious ones. The suckers. Look at you, Mary. 28, 20, so maybe. <laughs> Making $45 a week. Um, what happens if a child or two comes along? You just might not make it. We just might. I'm talking to Mary Bailey Hatch, a smart, ambitious young woman who has been dying to get out on her own since the day she was born, write books, travel the world. But she can't because she's trapped. Trapped into frittering her life away, playing nursemaid to a lot of garlic eaters and taxi drivers. Isn't that... Pretty much a correct picture. 
Oh, uh, what's the point, Mr. Potter? My point? My point is I... I want to hire you. You want to hire me? I want you to manage my properties. And I'll start you out at $20,000 a year. And uh, buy your husband's uh, construction company. You wouldn't mind living in the nicest house in town, buying yourself a lot of fine clothes, business trips to New York, once a year to Europe. You wouldn't mind that, would you, Mary? No. Oh. Um, gee, Mr. Potter, I, I, I know I ought to just jump at the chance. I'm offering I, uh... you a three-year contract at $20,000 a year, starting tonight. Is it a deal or isn't it? Uh, well, I would, I'd, uh, I'd, uh, I'd like to really think it over. Sure uh, you do. I'd, I, I really have to t talk to George. Yeah, you go on home and talk to George about it. It's just the kind of encouragement he might need after his trip. Yes, I'd, uh... Meantime, I'll, I'll drop the papers. Yeah, that would, that would be fine, Mr. Potter. No. No. Oh, wait a minute here. I, I don't have to think about this. I, I don't have to talk to anybody. The, the answer is no. Just, just plain, flat no. Boy, you are really something, Mr. Potter. You think that you can just sit around here and and spin your little webs. And the whole world just revolves around you and your money. Well, it doesn't, Mr. Potter. God, in the, in the whole vast configuration of things, you're nothing. You really are. You're nothing more than a, than a spider. And I'm really happy not to be caught in your Scurvy little web. Here, Mr. Potter. Have a cigar. I'm going to have a baby. So Mary and George had a child, the first of three. A child. Oh, time goes so fast, Joseph. Just a little while ago, she was a child, dreaming of going places and doing things. That's life, Clara. Don't you remember? What's happening, oh, Joseph? Good George is leaving Bedford Falls, right. Clara, along with many other young men, to fight for his country. America is going to war. Like everybody else here, my feet hurt, my back aches. It, oh, my stomach. 
Now I know why they call the place we eat a mess hall. God, I miss you and Pete and Janie and Susie. And you. I guess we'll just have to get this thing over with fast. Till then, I'm yours, always. George. Dear Mary, I'm not sure who we're supposed to be defending the Panama Canal against. So far, the worst attacks have come from the mosquitoes. All in all, I guess I'm safer here than I'd be if I was still racing my taxi around Bedford Falls. Oh well, that's all for now. Love, Bernie. Dear Mary, so I figured with all my experience back in Bedford Falls, they'd make me into an MP. But the closest I got was KP. How do you like them potatoes? Your pal, Bert. Dear Mary, it's only the taking off and landing that's hard especially with the deck of the carrier bouncing around like a cake of soap in a bathtub. But I think I'm getting the hang of it. Love to Mom, Willie, Tilly, you and yours. From your kid brother, Lieutenant Harry Bailey. Daddy's coming home. He's, he's just got this little hurt. He says it isn't a very big hurt. And you know how he exaggerates. Mm -hmm. So it probably isn't anything. Anyway, he's coming home, and everything's going to be just the way it was. <laughs> Susie, you don't even remember him, do you? You were too little. It would be wonderful having him back. I know he missed us just as much as we missed him. You're really gonna like him, Susie. And everything's gonna be great. Remember it the way we dreamed it, George. Fresh painted houses and green lawns and families growing up together. It's still there, George. If you can only see it the way we dreamed it, it's still there. Shashina. Is this true? Yes, sir. Uh, what? These reports on Bailey Park. Five houses in that tractor from two to six months behind. Yes, sir. They, they belong to the people you fired from your mill. Uh, she's doing it. She can't hold out. There must be some way she's holding on. Now, what would I be doing 
If I were in her place. <laughs> well, we'll just see how she handles the surprise bank examination. <laughs> What's so interesting in all them out-of-town papers? Oh, I can't wait a week for the Bedford Falls Gazette. Can't imagine why. <laughs> Mary! Hi, Vi. I heard it on the radio. Oh, it's so exciting. Is it in the city papers? It's only in the headlines. Look at this. Boston, New York, Portland. Does it actually say he's from Bedford Falls? Well, it says Lieutenant Commander Harry Bailey will receive the Congressional Medal of Honor from the President in a ceremony at the White House. Oh, today, Mary. Oh, it's going well, isn't it, Joseph? Bailey Park in the building alone. And Mary's brother coming home, a hero. You got a paper? You bet I do. Oh, good. I want to see if it's going to snow. No, you read every single word of that. Well, you know, I was on one of these ships. They hold about 2,000 men. Mary isn't young anymore, though, is she, Joseph? She isn't old, but she isn't really young. No, Clara, she is. He's on the phone. Now hurry. Phone. Oh, now hurry. Oh. Hurry. Harry's on the phone. All right, I found her. She's here. Guy. Oh, Mary, I almost forgot Mary, I have to make Mary, the deposit. Mary, and the Mary. bank is closing Hello? early. Hello? Oh, he hung up. Oh. He said he was late for something. He sounded just wonderful. Did he? Mm -hmm. He said your mother was having a wonderful time, and they had lunch with the president. They had beef wellington and chocolate mousse for dessert. Excuse me, Mrs. Hatch. Oh, I'm sorry. It slipped my mind in the excitement at all. Uh, Mary, this is Mr. Simpson, the bank examiner. Bank examiner? Yes, we sometimes make unscheduled visits, as you must know. Oh, yes, it's, it's just that we were just examined. Your uh, regular examination six months ago. Well, I know, that's why the I... The Banking Commission is very concerned about all institutions entrusted with the people's money. Oh, of course. It's just that it's Christmas Eve, and my brother's being awarded the... Yes, I've heard. Congratulations. Could we get started? I'd like to be home for Christmas Eve. Uh, certainly. There, Mr. Potter. Oh, make your last deposit before bankruptcy, Willie. Don't you wish. Well, let me just show you something, Mr. Potter. Oh, what's in the news today, Potter? Not something about the Baileys at Bedford Falls, is it? Oh, by golly, here it is. Harry Bailey gets Congressional Medal of Honor. <laughs> well, he can't spend medals in peacetime, Mr. Cini. Can't keep those Baileys down, now can you, Mr. Potter? And they don't give medals for trying. <laughs> Forty years and we ain't down yet, Potter. I guess you forgot something. What? Well, aren't you going to make a deposit? Sure, sure I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's usually customary to bring the money with you. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, I, I, I know I had it with me. When you left the office, did you stop anywhere? I don't think so. You went right to the bank? Yeah. You always like to look at the watch. Did you go into Mr. Tompkins? I don't think so. Oh, Mary, I just don't know. Well, think. Oh, it's not fair, Joseph. She's going to need you, Clara. I'll be ready, Joseph. When the time comes, I'll find a way to guide Mary. try and establish a sequence. Now, did, did you have the money before you met me? Did, did you leave it on the, on the table or anything when you were talking to Harry? Uncle Willie, 
please, pay attention. I had it. I don't know. Did you, do you have any, any secret hiding places? I brought... No. Is there any place I... I don't know. Like, like in your house where you, where you put things? I'm trying, Mary. I really am. No, you're not. You're not trying. Think. Think. Oh, Mary, I'm no good to you. I, I just louse things up. That, that doesn't help. It was the same with your father. He just carried me. I don't want to hear it. I just want you to remember where you left the money. Do you understand that? I just don't know why anybody wants to keep me around. Stop that! Do you think you can get away with this just because you can act like a doddering old fool? Think! Just make one little demand on yourself. Where did you have the money, Willie? Where is that money, you fool? Don't you understand? We're ruined. George, Bailey Park, the building and loan, everything. Do you think Potter's just gonna let this go? Somebody's going to jail, and it isn't gonna be me. For once, damn it, I'm not gonna be the one. Um, here's our flower thing. How about put putting that, it... Yeah, you can put that there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. And we're gonna hang some tinsel there. Listen, put this here. See this candy cane? Put that right down on the end there. Oh, that's perfect. and see Susie. Why, what's the matter with Susie? She won a prize. It was a flower. She didn't want to button her coat and crush it, so she caught a cold. She's got a cold? Come on. Well, it's not serious. Doc Joshua says she's going to be all right. The doctor was here? Well, that's swell. I mean, that's all we need now. I mean, it's a wonder we all don't have pneumonia. This house is so drafty. Mary, what is the matter with Nothing you? Nothing is the matter with me. I'm, I'm worried about Susie. She has a cold. Isn't that what you said? What is it? Then why don't you go on upstairs? I will. Hi, sweetheart. You want a flower, see? Oh, it's pretty. I better get it a drink. No, no, no. You lie down. I'll give it a drink. I'm sorry. You broke my flower. That's all right, darling. It doesn't matter. You broke my flower. You fix it. You paste it. not all right. Well, this is the best I can do. Come on. Lie down. There. Come on. You lie down. You go to sleep. You get some rest and you'll be all better. I don't want to lie down. I want my flower. Please, Susie. Mommy needs you to be good right now. I know you feel sick and you feel grumpy. Please be good, my good girl for Mommy, please. <laughs> you broke my flower. All right, Susan, that's enough. Go to sleep. Lie down. You've got your flower. Uh, Mrs. Welsh, no. No, everything's going to be fine. Is that Susie's yes. teacher? Don't, don't you don't you worry. Oh, yes, I want to speak to her. Could you hold on a minute, please? Hello, Mrs. Welsh. This is Mary Hatch. I'd just like to know what you think you're doing by sending a child home half-dressed. Well, she's too young to make that kind of judgment. Janie, will you please? 
You're an adult. When you're a teacher, that's what we pay you to do, is to make those kind of judgments. She's a little kid. You let her go home half exposed. She'll probably catch pneumonia or something. Hello? Oh. She hung up. Well, Mary, what do you expect? Listen, the child has to see that lady every day. Mom, do you know where that person No, is? no, I don't. Stop it! Mary! You stop it. I'm in trouble, Mr. Potter. I need help. Through some sort of an accident, my company's short in their accounts. There's a bank examiner up there right now. I've got to raise $8,000 immediately. That must be what the reporters wanted to talk to me about. Please help me, Mr. Potter. Can't you see what this means to my family? I'll give you any sort of interest or bonus you want on the money. Could be there some slight discrepancy in your accounts? There's nothing wrong with my books. I've just misplaced $8,000. I can't find it anywhere. Why'd you come to see me? Why don't you go to Sam Wainwright? He's in Europe. I thought you had a lot of friends, Mary. They don't have that kind of money. You know that, Mr. Potter. You're the only person in town that can help me. Well, what collateral could you offer, Mary? Your stocks, your bonds, Bailey Park? Just look at you. The girl was gonna conquer the world. Here you come, crawling on your hands and knees, begging for help. Got a fifteen thousand dollar life insurance policy. What's your equity? Five hundred dollars. Why, Mary, you're worth more dead than alive. I don't know. I'll tell you why you didn't go for help to those riffraff friends of yours because they'd turn on you, run you out of town on a rail, first sign of trouble, and they turn. Remember that, Mary, and they'll hate you more than me because they believed in you. Oh, God, dear Father in heaven, please show me the way. I'm at the end of my rope. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. What can I get you? Uh, 
I'll take out one on each side. Oh, come on. Hey, let me make you an eggnog. It's on me. <laughs> Mary, how wonderful you come. <laughs> no, sit it back. Come, I get your table, huh? I don't think so, Mr. Well, Martini. What, what, what happened? Your eyes all blood. You hurt I, yourself? I, I hurt myself in the car. Mary. <laughs> Remember one day we talked about when I have my restaurant, are you going to come and have a nice glass of wine with me? Yeah. How about now? Huh? I don't I... think so. Not, not, not tonight. I don't feel like it tonight. Thanks, Mr. Martini. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Hatch. Merry Christmas. <laughs> More dead than alive. More dead than alive. Dead than isn't it? I was so pleased to pass away in it. What's this? Oh, Dickens' new book. Though I hear the one he's writing now, Oliver Twist, is better. He's becoming quite popular in the 19th century. That was pretty dumb, walking around on that thin ice. Oh, I thought you'd quite clever myself. It was all planned to get Mary's attention. Quite successful, don't you think? She didn't go through with it, did she? Go through with what? A big leap. It is against the law to commit suicide in this state. In my state, too. Which is what? The state of grace. I had to think quickly. I knew if she thought I was in trouble, she'd try to save me. And that's how I saved her. You saved me. Yes, I'm the answer to your prayers. The last time I prayed, I crashed my car into a tree. Well, we'll try to do better. Oh, I'm so thrilled. This is my big chance. I know everything about you. I watched you grow up. Who are you, anyway? I'm Clara Oddbody, ASC. What the devil is an ASC? It stands for Angel Second Cross. 
Angel second class. I'm an angel. Well, he wasn't too friendly. I must be losing my mind. Or maybe I did jump. I'm here to help you. You look like about the kind of an angel I'd get. Sort of a fallen angel, aren't you? What happened to your wings? I've got to earn them. Oh. And you're going to help me. Oh, how am I going to do that? By letting me help you, of course. Oh. You don't happen to have 8,000 unneeded dollars, do you? I would do this money in heaven. Oh. Well, it comes in pretty handy down here, I'll tell you. Well, we'll just have to think of something. You know what it's like to be worth $500 and that in an insurance policy? Oh, you mustn't talk like that. What? You don't know all that you've done. What, if it hadn't been for you? Yeah. If it hadn't been for me, a lot of people would be a lot better off. This isn't going to be so easy, getting my wings with that attitude. Nothing is easy. Sometimes I think it'd have been better if I'd never been born at all. Oh, you mustn't say things like that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's an idea. What do you think? Yes, they could do it. Right. You got your wish. You've never been born. You don't have to make all that fuss about it. Well, close the door. It's freezing. It's just stopped snowing. I don't feel the least bit cold anymore. Of course not. You don't exist. You haven't a care in the world. My clothes are perfectly dry. No worries, no obligations, no fight with George, no $8,000 to get, no Potter looking for you with the sheriff. And Mary, the cut on your head's all better now. Oh, it is. Well, we better hurry before the snow starts again. We'll walk back to my car. Oh, excuse me. I'll walk. You'll fly. What's the matter? This is where I left my car, and it isn't here. Oh! Oh, you've no car! Well, I had a car, and it was right here. Maybe I left it at Martini's. <laughs> This isn't the right place. Wait just a second. Excuse me, but uh, we seem to be lost. Yeah, you say that again. Could you just tell us how we get to Martinis? Martinis? Never heard of the joint. Nick? Nick? Yeah? Yeah, you got the name right. Anything else you want? Well, a little cheering up might help. You want a drink? Uh, sure. Uh, how about a, another eggnog? How about you, lady? What do you want? Uh, oh, it, it's been such a long time. But it is an occasion, isn't it? Come on, let's go. I got a lot of work to do. I was thinking, let's see. Maybe I'll have a flaming rum punch. Oh, no, uh, no. Uh, let me think. Oh, uh, um, let's see. Mulled wine. Heavy on the cinnamon, light on the cloves. Do be so good as to bring me mulled wine. Hey, what is this? You two broad slumming or something? T take it easy, Nick. W we'll have the two eggnogs. That'll be fine. Eggnogs will be fine. I don't even think that is, Nick. You know, I think we wandered off the wrong side of the bridge in all the confusion. I've never even seen this section before. I know why no one's told you about it. an awful lot like the bartender at Martini's. Okay. 
You've had your little joke. Now, just drink up and get out. Oh, no, you don't understand. We weren't doing that. I don't understand. You don't understand. Just drink your drinks and beat it and take your witch friend with you. I'm not a witch. I'm an angel. Oh, there goes another one. Another what? Every time you hear a bell ring, it means an angel got his wings. Uh, don't say anything about the wings or anything in here. Hey, we got a couple of angels here. <laughs> that is not an angel. Hey, you guys, look, I'm an angel. <laughs> we got angels here. <laughs> we got the angels an angel. here. I'm glad somebody. We got angels. Is that right? I really think we should go. I think we've caused enough trouble. Hey. I told you to stay out of here. Oh, stop doing that. <laughs> Mr. Gower? Mr. Gower? It's me, Mary Bailey. The old drugstore drunk. Stop that! There's just no way to prepare for the life to come, young man. Yes. Oh! Helpless old man, he's a helpless old kid killer. Full of you. Don't you dare strike a lady. Lady, you're not lady, you're a couple of angels. Remember, you're about to fly back to hell. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Man, I could have sworn it was Mr. Gower. He gave that child the poison prescription. You weren't there to stop him. Of course, he went to prison. Ruined his life, poor man. How could I have ever thought this place was Martini's? Don't you understand, Mary? You've never been born. What do you mean, I've never been born? Of course I was born. No. No, you're nobody. You've no identity. You've no papers, no husband, no children. They're not there either, Mary. What aren't? Susie's petals. How do you know about those? You've been given a great gift, Mary. A chance to see what the world would be like without you. Who are you? John, your guardian angel. Oh. Well, so far, you've done quite a job. I'm going to find my way back to Bedford Falls. How am I doing, Joseph? Where to? 
You're Ernie Baker, aren't you? So? Don't you know me? I gave you the money. I made the loan so you could own your own cab. You gotta be kidding me. You own my own cab? Old man Potter owns the cab. All right. Just take me home. I'll be glad to, lady. Just tell me where. 320 Sycamore. Place, lady. Of course, it's the place. George. Bert, am I glad to see you. What's up? I think we got a real one this time. What do you mean? This lady stripped her gears. They're not here, Mary. Nobody's here. You don't have a family. I do. I have a husband. I have children. Come on down here, both of you. Bert, oh, Bert. Hey, what's going on there? Oh, Bert, Bert. Come on down here, both oh, of you. Bert, Come on. Thank God you're here. Yeah. Something terrible is happening. Sure it is, sure it is. Now look. Look, you take it easy and I'll take it to doctor. You gotta okay? understand this woman. She says she's an angel. Sure she does. Yeah, sure, I know. What are you know. doing? Uh, don't worry stop about it. it huh? First, stop, yeah. stop. Don't make it hard on yourself. No, no. Ah. Baby, ah. run! Save yourself! Baby! Oh! Hey, give me your hand! Look, maybe I should go to the station and get some help. Look, if you're looking for a room, no, I don't have no, any... Please don't lock the door. Wait. Something terrible's happening. I, I don't know what it is. Something's happening to everybody. P please just let me in. Just let me stay here until I get over it. What's the matter with you? I don't know. Please. Please, I need you, Mama. 
please recognize me. It's Mary. I'm your daughter. A daughter? I don't have a daughter. Yes, you do. You, you do. You have a daughter and you have a son. I don't have a daughter. And my boy died 30 years ago. Oh, God. Oh, oh, no. Your brother, Harry Bailey, broke through the ice and drowned at the age of eight. That's not true. Harry Bailey went to war. He won the Congressional Medal of Honor. He saved the lives of every man on that transport. Every man on that transport died. And he wasn't there to save them, because you weren't there to save Harry. Strange, isn't it? Each life touches so many other lives, and when they're not around, it leaves an awful hole, doesn't it? You see, Mary, you really did have a wonderful life. Wouldn't it be a shame if you just threw it all away? Clara, where's George? I know you know. Please tell me, Clara. Clara, please. Clara! George? Yeah, who is it? George? Please know me. It's Mary. Oh, yeah. Mary? Sure. How you doing, Mary? Oh, John. It really is you. Oh, sure. Who else? Oh, John. You know me. You know me. Listen, kid, maybe I don't know you, but uh, as long as we're this close, why don't me and you have a little party, huh? I'm your wife. Oh, yeah, sure. Whatever you say. Look, I got a bottle of some nice stuff inside. Come on. George, please don't do this. Please stop it. Please remember. Remember? What? Bailey Park. Bailey Park? The $2,000. How do you know about that? You're a builder. That's kid stuff. You wanted to build boom jobs. Yeah, I wanted to get out of this crummy place once. That's right. So what? That's life. Oh, come on. Huh? Come Where are the children? I want my children. Hey, lady, I don't have any children. I don't know who you think I am, but I got no kids. And anybody who brings up kids in this world has got to be crazy. You understand? Now, come on. Stop it! Leave me alone! Stop it! Stop it! Hey, you! Stop! Come on, help me! That dame's crazy! Hey, Mary, what are you yelling for? Mary, do you, do 
Do you know me, Bert? Are you kidding? I've been looking all over town for you. I saw your car racked in that tree, and I thought, Mary, your head's bleeding. Are you sure you're all right? My head's bleeding. Oh, Bert, my head's bleeding. Oh, my head's bleeding, Bert. It really is. Is it bleeding? Susie's petals. Susie's petals. Susie's petals. <laughs> oh, Bert. Merry Christmas, Bert. <laughs> oh, it's snowing. It's snowing. Hey, Mary, where are you going? I'm going home. I'm going. Fine thing to do on Christmas Eve. Well, business is business. <laughs> business. We'll just have to wait till she comes in. George! Oh! Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Bank Examiner. Miss, Mrs. Hatch, there's a serious deficit. Yes, I know. It's $8,000. I, I know. Mary, I've got this little paper here. I'll bet it's a warrant for my arrest. It's wonderful, isn't it? Mm, Merry Christmas. Oh, reporters. Where's George? George? Mommy! Where's your father? He went looking for you with Uncle Willie. How are you? Let me see you. Let me see you. You guys still here? What's your temperature? Oh, Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, George. Oh, Daddy, George. Mommy's home. Mommy's home. Oh, George. George. Oh, George told me. Oh, you really are real. Oh, Who's that real? Where have you been? Oh, and George, I have so much to tell you. Wait till I tell you what's happened no, to me. No, no, it's going to be all right. Let me tell you what happened in town. What? They're coming. What? Uh, come on. Where They're going to be here in a minute. Everybody hurry. Who's going to be here? Where's you go. Come on, George. George. Come on. Go stand in front of the tree. Everybody. Come on, Pete. <laughs> They're here now. I'll get the door. Uncle Willie, come on in. What a grand night, George. Yes. George. Merry Christmas, everybody. Come on in. Isn't it wonderful, Mary? George did it. He did. He just told a few people that we were in trouble, and, and they scattered all over town collecting the money. And they never even asked a question. They, they just said, if the Bailey Hatches are in trouble, they can count on us. It was a, it was a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> What is this, you two? Another run on the bank? Yeah. Oh, hi, hi. Merry Christmas. George, Mary, here you are, friends. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey, I busted the jukebox. <laughs> I wouldn't have a roof over my head if it wasn't for you two people. Merry Christmas. I had to get them all out of bed.
bed, but I collected all my charge accounts. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mr. Gower. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Mary. It's Harry. Mary. To my big sister Mary, the richest person in town. Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne. said every time a bell rings an angel gets his wing. That's right. That's right. Drink a cup of kindness yet for all.